so terrible most times i just get so used to these songs that i just sing them along like that for the past uh, eight months nigeria and nigeria government and their agents have been uh, lying or performing what we can call a circus show a charade called the trial of the leader of the indigenous people of uh, Biafra, IPOB. It is a charade because it has no legal base whatsoever. I'm not a lawyer, but I have been following this long enough to be able to tell you what I know. And then you can see how easy it is to understand. Nigeria committed a crime when they kidnapped Namdekanu from Kenya. As you are watching this video, Kenya, uh, the Chief Justice of Kenya, no, no Chief Justice, Attorney General of Kenya, somebody who is like Malamu in Nigeria, yeah, they have approached court to say yes. In their country, yes. Unamdi Kanu entered our country legally. But we cannot find the traces, we cannot find the evidence when and how Namdekanu left our country. That is to say, Nigeria went to Kenya. They kidnapped a British citizen. They now smuggled him, give, they smuggled him out of Kenya without the attention of the government of Kenya. That now makes it a two crimes. This is how it's going to work. Oh. But I will let uh, this uh, barrister let me do the explanation because if I they talk too much now, it will be like say, um, my yegu, my yegu, slow down. You know they have sort, you know they have sort. Sort don't they enter arm. After this person talk, I go see at my own sorts. Listen to this. It's a very important topic to talk about. But I'll digress a little. I beg your indulgence to talk about a developing story, something that uh, happened yesterday. There was an affidavit filed by the Attorney General of Kenya on the 10th of February before the Kenyan High Court, uh, before which uh, Mazin Nandekano had brought a legal action over this extraordinary rendition. So finally, we have the government of Kenya through an affidavit drawn up and filed by the Attorney General of Kenya, um, stating clearly without any equivocation that there was no record of departure of Mazin Nandekano from Kenya from when he entered Kenya last on the 12th of May last year. So this is the clearest confirmation yet beyond media razzmatazz. This is now inside the record of the court of Kenya that the Kenyan government is on record with, with such significant denial. So you can say that Nigeria has finally been thrown under the bus by Kenya. This denial, whether true or not, makes the case of extraordinary rendition of Mazin and the canon much stronger than it was before. That's number one. Number two, it has created a panoply of possible criminal violations that will ensue <coughs> on grounds of the anti-torture legislation of Nigeria and the United Nations 
convention against uh, torture. And of course, laws of Kenya. So right now, you're looking at a situation where um, criminal indictments may lie against those people that participated directly or indirectly in the abduction, unlawful imprisonment, disappearance, torture, and the ultimate rendition of Mazin and the Kano to Nigeria. So why we were uh, hit at the fall, why we were previously talking about extraordinary rendition as a barrier to his prosecution in the Abuja criminal matter that is pending. We are now talking about a situation where you have very serious. It's a long conversation, but because of our time, I decided to chip that in. So what uh, Barrister Aloy Ejimako was trying to tell us there is this. Even though Nigeria is telling you that they want to try Nam Dekano, yeah? In the process of trying to get Nam Dekano, Nigeria has committed a crime under the international law. Now, Nigeria also committed another crime, a very, very serious one. Oh, they kidnapped an innocent citizen from another country. They tortured him, and then they took him out of that country without the attention of the authority in that country. So when this whole thing goes down, yeah, Kenya, Nigeria, when this goes down, Nigeria and Kenya will have to throw out all the officers involved because the indictment that will be coming will not just come over the country. It's coming after those who did the job in Kenya and those who work with Malamu in Nigeria, including the pilots, the pilot that flew the plane, that took a, a, an uncovered kidnapped Unam Dekanu to Nigeria. So when some of you are waiting for Nigeria, as you are praying that Buhari should do this to Unam Dekanu, Buhari should jail him, Buhari should keep him. The only thing Bokwari can do is to enjoy his illegality while it lasts. Last, last, eh? Buhari, Malamuo, and so many people that you and I don't even know that were involved in kidnapping Unam Dekanu, they will be those standing trial for extraordinary rendition. You don't say somebody uh, jumped bail when you attempted to kill him. Barrister Mike Ozekome, eh? the, the Agbejoro, to Danto in Yoruba, a, a bona fide professional solicitor. He had more to say about Kenya. I think you should listen. Jump bail when you said you're coming to court for trial, you voluntarily escape. But when you escape, when you run away from death, that cannot be jumping bail. Unam Dekano would have died. So when he now went to London, where he's also a, a British citizen, he, he, he had another glass, which again was seized from him and broken when he was captured in Kenya, like a common criminal, and forcefully renditioned to Nigeria. So today he has no glasses to use. So the court now has ordered the DSS to ensure that he gets his, his glasses. Then on the issue of clothes, if I'm here, I think John Bay when he said to come are bad, bad, and bad. Like I described it before the court, they are as dead as dodo all that the court requires is to give them a decent barrier because there is nothing whatsoever in the counts at all you are accusing now the canoe of making some broadcast you didn't say where this broadcast was made was it made in the spirit world was it made in the air was it made under the ground you didn't state that was to run away from the first count they had fired, which we got, uh, which we attacked when they had mentioned the United Kingdom. So they thought that by not mentioning a place, they had gotten away from it. But as a matter of fact, they had worsened their case because the Federal High Court Act says specifically, Section 34, that you must state 
the very location, specific location where an offense has been committed. Yes. That is one. They, they couldn't state any. They say it may brokers. And that the brokers were in furtherance of some treasonable acts. For you to charge a person with furthering, with furthering treasonable, treason, you must have to charge the person with treason. Nam the Kanu is not charged with treason here. We call it the predicate offense. It is from this predicate offense that the acts of furthering we emanate. So they are building empty, I mean, castles on empty air. There's nothing to support it. You are saying that the brokers he made led to protests, violent protests in the East and in Lagos, affecting Lagos' transportation system. Does this court have jurisdiction territorially over Lagos and matters that happen near Uli, near Ihiala, in Anambra State? No. Does this court have jurisdiction over matters if, they were, if there was an offense committed, for example, say in UK? Does this court have jurisdiction over matters that happen in UK? Answer, no. Because this court cannot exercise jurisdiction on matters within a sovereign land, another country that has sovereignty under international law. Another major point is that you are trying this man, saying for committing, uh, for, uh, for belonging to a proscribed organization. And I must now say this, contrary to what the prosecution said last time, Namdi Kano has never denied being uh, a member of IPOB. He says, I am not a member of proscribed IPOB. I want all of you to know the difference. And when IPOB was proscribed, through the court process. Inam the Kanu challenged it. The matter is at the Court of Appeal currently. Yeah. Nobody knows the judgment of the Court of Appeal. If the Court of Appeal finally says that this prescription was wrong, as we are contending, let's say by that time you had already tried Namdi and jailed him, how will you bring him back? So you are trying him under a law that is inchoate, that is being challenged whose efficacy and longevity is being tested and has not been finished. So we call it uh, little pendence or the doctrine of subjudice. So you cannot. So Nadi Kanu, in his extrajudicial statement, said I, he founded IPO in 2012 in London. And that is, is the head. He has never denied being the founder, head, and member of IPO, but he denies being a member of proscribed IPOB. This point must be made clear. We have also challenged the, the entire um, law itself, the Terrorism Prevention Act as amended, of 2011 as amended in 2013. Now, it is not a law within the exclusive leg uh, uh, legislative list of the National Assembly that it ought to have made. It has no competence to make it under the Constitution. We have also challenged that. Um, there are other grounds, very strong grounds, where we are challenging that. The, for example, you, you, you brought this man, you abducted him by force, you tortured him, you captured him like a common criminal in Kenya. A British citizen who had gone to Kenya voluntarily, you captured him, you abducted him, and you, you rendered him to Nigeria by force without going through any extradition process. And all the laws governing this matter, like Article 12, um, so, so 4, Article 34 of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, like um, Sections 4 to 6 of the, um, uh, of the terrorism and other acts within the Commonwealth jurisdiction, and even Part 5A of the guidelines issued pursuant to the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, say that before you can try a person for an offense, you have to show that the person was rendered freely and voluntarily, lawfully, to your country from the country where he was, maybe as a fugitive or as a visitor. But in the Kanu was captured in Kenya and brought here extra judicially to Nigeria to face trial. That cannot make any count based on that to stand. It is like saying that you can 
destroy a person ahead so as to have the 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 the, the, the chance to, tr to 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 try the person so we raise some very fundamental steps and in any case in any event the entire 34 grounds that we fight the entire affidavit and a affid better affidavit including points of law they could never deny any of them they just did what you call general denier by saying the prosecution denies the affirmance in your affidavit. What are you saying to it? What did they say to the fact that Namdi Kanu was extrajudicially rendered and renditioned to Nigeria? They don't have a word. What do they say to the fact that this case is on appeal and you cannot charge a person on a law that is still in court? They have nothing to say. What do they say when we said that this court has no jurisdiction because you have not said that the law was breached here. You are saying it was breached in another country and it had ricocheting effects here. Where is the predicate offense, which is terrorism, which you did not charge him for? They have nothing to say. So everything they have here is hollow, hollow, and hollow. And that is why we are attending the court to strike out the 15 count charge, discharge and acquit in Amdekano, let him breathe the fresh air of Nigeria. Did you hear that? So for some of you, especially the lovers of Unam Dekano, all right, who have been waiting patiently and patiently and you are becoming impatient. Let me tell you something that I, did, I, mean, I deduced from that conversation. Unam Dekano's lawyers, they are not asking for bail. Nigeria government, that is brandishing different lies in their media about what they are trying on Namdi Kanu for. They are charging him on 15 count charge. None of them include terrorism or treason. Even though you, Lagos Ababaku, Oshobo Alimajiri, ombud slave, obedient fool, sophisticated moron, Onku, even if you are expecting them to Jail in Namdekanu or kill him. Namdekanu this and that. I wish you are educated enough to understand. They can't. They are not even planning to. All their, all their charges, his lawyers are not asking for bail. His lawyers are asking the court to throw them away and release Namdekanu. Do you know it's a two different thing now? When are they going to free our, our leader? When are they going to release our leader? I am saying it to you now. Yes, it takes almost forever. It is because Nigeria continues to run from their own courts. So, Nigeria, all this why, Nigeria has presented their charges now. On, in April, the defense of Unam Dekanu, they said they are not going to ask for bail. They are going to ask the courts that although they have 15 count charge, we have 34 ground to fight Nigeria and tell you in this court that you cannot even, you see what's in the ground there, eh? Nigeria court cannot handle it. You, judge, we want you to give that judgment. Say, you know if you handle them. We, we are going to deal with these people who killed Nap Namdekanu. To save yourself, now you need to discharge Namdekanu. So, I think it's the best way I can explain it to you. They are not asking for bail. They are not asking for bail anymore. And it's a process, it's a court process. The only leverage, the only power that Nigeria has right now is for them to keep running away from courts. Do you understand that? So just give them time. Give them time. And watch how this is going to, going to play out. Nam the is not going to die in their detention. Nah, they won't dare. You get her? Um? So, and I'm following, you know, maybe in me just today, maybe I am the one who just probably gets carried away, but I understand my feelings, and I just told you how, and you probably should think it too. My time is gone, it's almost gone. So now, let's, let's talk about this, okay? On YouTube, if you are my friend, if you're actually following my ego genuinely, right? There's no, it, it, it doesn't look good. That you have uh, over 2,000 of us on YouTube, and we only have 
800 of you who could take just a minute to leave the chat room and like the video. Drop your offering. It's so easy. You can do that within a sec. You won't miss anything. I'll still be talking. You'll still be watching me. But you can leave that chat room, like the video, and if you haven't even shared it, come on, it's the moment. Share it. Because my next uh, story, which is my final one tonight, is going to be that of no other, I mean, that of uh, no other person than our man, Pablo Abba Oshtelo Kiari. Pablo. Pablo is a lagbo lagbo where he meets with uh, the, some of the criminals who they run the underworld with. If you know, you know. For all of us, we grew up in Yoruba land. If you know, you know. Right? Pablo was a role model to so many people. Oh, why do I keep uh, popping this picture? You know, it is just that uh, to know that if Tifnumbu, Kolu, she become APC, Egbe Kegbe, presidential candidate. Gandola, the Babari Ga Mobile Banking CEO of Kano. Gandola is going to be the one to deputize him. I just thought you should remember that, by the way. But I mean, in this same uh, Nigeria, Pablo, where they sell drug, Pablo, who has a link to all the drug dealers from Brazil, from Ethiopia, to this place, to that place, all over Africa. Pablo is also, Pablo is, Pablo is many things, okay? Pablo is also a role model, campaigning against drugs. The same drug that the way they sell you is ad advising people. I've got advice against drug and the rest of that. Now that they caught him, oh, now that uh, the Casala don't bust, Pablo, I heard it somewhere. They said Pablo is now complaining that uh, now the IPOB, all of you IPOB members, eh, you have become the nightmare of so many people, by the way. I remember when that weary, the, the one that is, uh, the, is it the judge of the Code of Conduct uh, Tribunal in Nigeria? You know that guy? That, uh, that that lunatic, yeah? The one that beat up somebody. He beat up uh, a security guard at a shopping mall in Abuja. 
a judge, yo. He beat the guy up, beat him up. Beat him up. Do you know we are talking about? We caught it on video. The madman suddenly said, I was attacked by IPOB. So some of you IPOB members, eh? I don't know how you did it, though. But let's say you don't give so many people serious uh, nightmare. Somehow, somehow. And I, I think it's, it's that part of a paranoia. That kind of paranoia that is making some of them to just act like mad people in a country that they claim to be the leader of the place. Yeah? They act like, uh, if you see an Igbo man, ah, if you see this and that. Now, the Igbo man tell you, say, may you go to deal with drug. You are supposed to be on suspension. You are not supposed to do any police job. They are investigating you for the money you collected from Oshpopi. Oshpopi is in Chicago jail waiting for the government of America to sentence him. They were supposed to, to sentence uh, Raymond Abbaso. They were, or Shpopi, they were supposed to sentence him this month. Eh? Because uh, Abba or Shtelo Kiyari couldn't make the flight. Now, they have adjourned the sentencing of uh, Oshpopi to sometimes uh, in May or June this year. So, is it the IPOB members that told Abba Kiyari to go and collect money from uh, criminals and continue to cover them up? This man... It's not just that kind of criminal alone, no. about money and drug. He is also a murderer. If you know how many innocent uh, Biafrans that this guy, under the disguise of uh, looking for IPOB members, they said it was to go to Eastern Nigeria and hunt down, hunt down the ESN leaders. Do you understand? So, because he is the leader of the underworld, Nobody knew then that uh, Abba Kiyari from uh, Borono, Abi, where did he come from? From Borono, eh? Is in contact, in a very good relationship with uh, drug dealers who are using Enugu airports. So from Borono to Enugu, can you imagine? If to say Nigeria is a real country where everybody controls their region, that is going to be called cross-border, trans-border drug smuggling. Abba Kiyari, police officer. He was hunting Igbos. He was hunting Biafrans. He was killing them, making them disappear. He was locking them up in different, uh, uh, what you, different uh, detention all over the country, unaccounted for. He was doing that with so much glee. He was enjoying it. Eh? Obi Kubana. Ah, he said the Igbos don't like Abakiari. IPOB don't like Abakiari. Abakiari is a friend to Obi Kubana. That was how some of my IPOB brothers, they were like, you go see what you go happen to that Obi Kubana soon. Maybe he's uh, a Bakiari friend. See all these killings going on in Eastern Nigeria. When was the last time Obi Kubana talked about it? When was the last time the human talked about it? When and what, you know, all those things. People, they para. Because they are friends of Abakiari, the man that goes to Eastern Nigeria, heavily harmed, and is hunting for Biafrans in the name of IPOB. And he kills them. People have lost their family members. They don't even have anywhere to report to. Because Abakiari was licensed to kill. So if you begin to probe by Bakiari, you realize that some of those Igbo brothers and sisters they killed in disguise, they told you, unknown government, this unknown that, they are going into villages. Look around you today, oh. Ebu Beagu, Ebu Belizad. They too, they are burning people's homes now in eastern Nigeria. So this Abakiari is a murderer. That if a thorough investigation is done and people are being picked up here and there, eh? So now turning around to say the IPOB are behind him. IPOB told you to go and to, to, to go and do drug smuggling using police work, changing, changing uh, 15, 15 kg cocaine, changing with, with uh, 15 kg elubo. And then uh, you see you see went back there to collect 5 kg to do a transaction. And your brother, eh? His brother is a criminal. I don't know why they haven't arrested his brother. There are so many people that should be arrested now. But somehow, somehow, they can go to northern Nigeria. In fact, the only reason why some people are angry with uh, what is happening to Abakiari is because, especially from northern Nigeria, is because the Biafrans are celebrating it badly. You should be celebrating it. He is a criminal. That if he wasn't, if, if they never caught him, right? He will be your police IG. Imagine police IG, drug dealer, drug baron, police IG. She, you will never finish with that. Even though Nigeria don't finish. But I mean, you get what I mean? You should be celebrating. 
But Nigeria is Nigeria. You all love your criminals differently. And I understand. I do. I'm going to go. Because uh, I've had a very wonderful night, by the way. And uh, if you are just joining me, you can, rewind, you, know, you can rewind the video. And you can watch it all over again. And yes, uh, I'm going to see you some other time. Okay? So for those of you who, have, who are yet to drop your own offering, I know you would love to call in and make some contribution to but it's late. And you know how we do it, yeah? Hopefully the time will change soon and we can switch the time as well. But don't forget it, okay? If this is your first time of watching Mayegu, eh? And you kind of enjoy yourself as well. You lasted this long. And you haven't really subscribed on Mayegu's Diary Political. Come on. Click on that right now. Like the video. Share it. Subscribe. And you will never miss a thing. You get what I mean? Eh? I'll see you some other time. Thank you so much to all of you. And uh, you should all have a wonderful, a wonderful night. Good night from here. I 